Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Fall Turf Festival at Gulfstream Park West. Called the Chamber of Commerce, told them to deliver this kind of day. What a fantastic day out. We got a fast main track, firm turf course. Just a, I don't know, maybe mid-70s or something like that. Just so comfortable out here. Good afternoon, Pete Aiello, our track announcer here. And uh, Monday, uh, we got a perfect 10 going to kick in today. $25,000 if you can have the only ticket with 10 winners here this afternoon. 10 cents of minimum investment will allow you to get a little bit of coverage in some of these races today. I don't know that you need them all that much. These races, are, at least to me, there's a couple of races that I have zero opinion in, and there's a couple of races where I have a lot of opinion in. Yeah, so you could single. You got to single a couple here, and you see the super high five up there, Pete. Over $2,000 in that pool. Super high five race of the day. Boy, is this a tough one. The 10th race of the afternoon, by far the toughest race on the day. Full field of two-year-old sprinting in race number 10 with super high five opportunity you're chasing a carryover a little over 2300 yeah so our mondays we have that special betting pattern today we have a daily double every other race and no uh, no uh, pick fours or pick threes or anything like that yeah it's uh, usually like uh, god sunday for me i have to rest on mondays as far as <laughs> wagering goes i don't have pick threes or pick fours to invest in so i try to roll the daily doubles here this afternoon we can, you can do that daily doubles every other race Starting with race number one on the turf course at one mile. Yeah, this acclaim is if Phillies and Mares three and up, $8,000. I went to the inside horse, and so did you, Pete. Rowan and Victoria returning to the turf, dropping from $10,000, $8,000, four wide second in the slop. Looks like a good spot for this horse. Probably should have showed her replay last time, even though it was on the main track. She makes a huge sweeping move, gets on even terms. I pretty much wrote her as going on with it that day, and then party till dawn, kick back gamely and drew back away from Ronan Victoria. If she runs that race back from a flow standpoint, she'll probably win it. The turf course invariably continues to play to outside closers. It's not exclusive, there's nothing is in horse racing, but if you tip to the outside in the stretch and you're in stride shouting range with a good enough kick, that's the way the turf course has been playing. We saw it yesterday, Little Miss Sure Shot from dead last. Kittens Toy stalked the pace and kicked by in the lane. That's been the way to do things on this turf course, and I think Ronan Victoria is well set up to do it today. Well, let's. Uh, look, my other horse in here was the two Angels girls sending, uh, getting some class relief today after failing to offer a best. That was a 12-5 acclaimer on a good uh, 12 screen park turf course. Looking uh, for, she displayed ba winning performances back to back in July and August. Off that, I think maybe she can rebound in the spot and grab a chair. Another horse that can rebound big time is the number seven Sweet Dreamin', who you use third, I use second. Actually, almost used her on top. I love the form pattern here. She uh, had a bad race back in July at Gulfstream Park. She was laid up by Jose Pynchon. The race got washed off the grass. Jose likely said to himself, well, what the heck, I need to get a race into her anyway. Uh, she didn't run a step that afternoon, finished last, moves back onto the turf course with a tightener. She has tactical speed in a race where there's not a whole lot of dedicated speed. You see Useful Barry makes my ticket. I think she makes the lead here, unless uh, congrats hunting on the stretch out wants to be part of the action. In any case, Sweet Dreamin will land a good early spot under jockey Orlando Boca Chica. She has a big chance uh, right now, three to one. That's too short if she drifts up. That's the play. Well, it's very early in the wage. We got like 56 minutes left. So let's go to the second race today. Uh, we got a uh, one mile Philly and Mayor event, three year olds and up 6,250 claimers. I want to show you a video from uh, uh, October 23rd and it's the stretch run of love, number two and that day, La Stupenda. Yeah, this was a good run from her and she's my top play. The horse on the lead there, you can see it out Wildcat and she's even money and traveling like a good thing for Peter Walter. That's La Stupenda in the shadow roll, just taking third. White Lion, Ronnie's top play in this race, is the horse uh, racing second at this point in time. I'll end up out kicking White Lion uh, that afternoon with La Stupenda. La Stupenda will likely do that again today, although Mr. Nicoletti continues to be stubborn and continues to be loyal, <laughs> using the White Lion on top here today. That's her back third on this backtrack. You couldn't catch out Wildcat, and she was a stone-cold cinch before and after that race and during the race. She never looked like a loser at any point during that afternoon. La Stupenda made good ground to be second, outran wild, uh, White Lion who you think will outrun her again today. Yeah, did, you know, departs from the rail after fighting from the eighth pole, you know, to finish third. I thought it was a pretty good performance. Gustavo Delgado, Edgar Zayas in the saddle today. I got, of course, I got the three, La Stupenda, on my ticket for all the reasons you mentioned. And I used the other Gustavo Delgado horse in here, number six, letting go. This one will stretch out if the chasing and fading at three quarters. One at this distance, I'll be at a one-turn mile at Gulfstream Park on uh, September 21st. So uh, she couldn't run eight furlongs. I figured I'd go the uh, longer part of the uncouple entry angle. Uh, no argument for me. Letting go is another horse. I think tactically she trips out pretty good here. Stretches out in distance and stretches out around two turns here this afternoon. 
I got a pretty good chuckle out of your comment section. I happen to be reading that yeah. over the corner of <laughs> over my shoulder. Oh. I don't think we can mention that on the air, but let's just say that he's got a little sour grapes from yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Let him go. It's lost his Penda, and on the inside, White Lion are the three to beat it here. Yeah, that's the comment, sir. I wish we could mention that on air. No, we cannot. By the way, scratch the two in here in that spot down for it. I forgot all about that. Uh, that was supposed to be not seen by you. Third race this afternoon, one mile on the turf, made and claim is creating up $35,000. I went with the three, Wall Street Kitten, making his first start since finishing third. That was against $65,000 claimers at the spa. Then it was third against Maiden Special Weight Competition at Kentucky Downs. Trainer Mike Maker, Edgar Prado, had a fantastic day yesterday. Son of Kittens, Joy, going to take an awful lot of money in this uh, race and put him on top of my ticket. You went with the two, Candyman Can. You actually think, I'm, I'm asking leg legitimately, there's yeah. no loaded question to this. You think Wall Street Kitten goes favored here? No. I think probably the six American strong will. Okay. But, I mean, it's going to take some money in here. Well, I agree with you, and I agree with the fact that I think the six goes favorite. So I went with the two candy man can. We're going to get into this, as everyone's heard by now, if you've listened to this program. I don't like horses first time from New Jersey, but I love them second time. And that's this is uh, candy man can. Second start since coming off a layoff from Monmouth Park. Took money last time out against a nice winner in King of Bay from the barn of Mike Trombetta. Paco Lopez returns to the riding colony in South Florida today. He's aboard candy man can. Looks like a... Very very good spot for this horse. Takes a little bit of a class drop off a of freshening. As you like to say, the proverbial screws have been tightened, and Candyman Can will be the longest of the three favorites who are the three that we used. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned Paco Lopez, a big favorite here in South Florida. Certainly in New Jersey, rides uh, first call for most of the time for Eddie Pleaser. So lots of things to like about the two Candyman Can. Let's talk about that six American strong. Debuts locally at a mile for Christoph Clement after finishing third. That was against maiden special weight types of Delaware back on uh, October, uh, excuse me, August 30th. You know, the barn is excellent with turf runners, 21% with the 61 to 180 day layoff. Edgar Zayas will be in the saddle. So you're right, probably will go off the favorite in there. Uh, but Mike Maker will give him a, a run for the money for the favoritism. But you know what? Paco, very popular down here. Well, that's what I was going to say. If you think the three and six take the lion's share of the money and they end up taking the lion's share of the money, I think this is a race where you have to try to beat him with Paco Lopez. Uh, that said, I think if the six goes favorite, I'd rather try to have the three in the second spot, as you can see by my picks. That was strictly a value standpoint. I think those are the three horses in race three today. Well, let's go to race four. Five and a half furlong claimers. Non-winners of three in life. Uh, Three-year-olds and up. $8,000 scratch to three. Barry Snow. I went with the one pro goal, dropping a notch, going from turf to dirt. This horse on the dirt, eight starts, two wins, two seconds in the third. For the group we just mentioned, Eddie Police to the trainer, Paco Lopez, failed to go a fire. That was going five furlongs. It was a good turf course at the Meadowlands. I, I just think this is the logical horse. And yeah, you know, we just got our exact flip flop. Congrats, Rob. Certainly figures. Yeah, well, the one horse pro gold, unlike Candyman can, this is first time from New Jersey, so can't use them on top. Have to use the four. Congrats, Rob. Not usually an angle I like to use. Winner right back off of non winners of two, moving to non winners of three. This is a pretty soft non winners of three, especially from a pace standpoint because you have Coro Coro, late in fire, and then the wild card in the race is the seven horse game day. They all look like they're destined to want to go to, to the lead, where I think Congrats, Rob, will probably sit in front of pro gold and get first run on him. But also slay off the speed. So I think he trips out pretty good here. Arnie Fontanez with the return call. The horse that he beat, Tony Tile, lost by about an inch and a half yesterday. Yeah, and he was the ninth to five favorite yesterday, too, when he lost. He just got beat at the wire. I did use one of those speed horses in the third spot. Coral Cora, I thought, can hold on. Stepping up to the next level after using that speed to dispatch a field of uh, 6,252 lifetime foes. Won that race by two lengths. It's Doug Potter and Ever Agueta in the saddle. If Coral Coral's uh, involved in the win photo, I will be involved in the losing. <laughs> I do not like Coral Coral in you race did, four. You had to get that in, didn't you? Just yeah, I did. It. I did have to get that in because I think he's going to take money, and he's not your top play, so it's not like no. I'm taking a shot at you. Well, you I always just take don't shots like at Coral, me. Coral Coral. Let's go to the fifth race. One mile on the turf. Starter optional claimer. Three-year-olds and up. The claiming level here is $20,000. Uh, blinkers on the one bingo, bango, bongo. And go easy with that when you call the race. Numbers, scratch number six, storm warnings. And the main track only, number nine, macho. Bingo, bango, bongo. Who do you like in here? 
Uh, I like uh, the either Stall Walking Dude or Dusty Moore. Dusty Moore's just been so, so good. Oh, we got a video that we want to show. Yeah, we That's do right. want to show you the video of Stall Walking Dude, Dude last That's time right. out. He ran a very, very good race, and he was actually uh, not regarded at all. He was an 8-1 to one proposition, beat a very nice field. You can see Rock Alex and Native Gold put it forward, was coming in from Presque Isle, and he had won about four or five races over the summertime. That's Stall Walking Dude getting a beautiful run inside for Jockey Jesus Rios, and he's going to kick by, put it forward, and outrun Rock Alex and Native Gold, two very regarded allowance horses at this South Florida campaign. Stall walking dude does have some success on the turf. He was a winner three starts ago. He was third two back as the favorite behind fan base, who we'll face here today. But I like the way he progressed first off the claim for David Jacobson. We'll see if he runs back to that last race. If he does, he'll give Dusty Moore all he wants. Dusty Moore is the three-year-old taking on the older horses. Today. Yeah, he's back in the optional claiming ranks after returning from an almost uh, three-month layoff to finish second. That was in that $100,000 showing up. Once again, Gustavo Delgado, Santiago Gonzalez in the saddle. Like fan base, too, like us, we have uh, basically the same three horses. Fan base back on the grass like uh, uh, grass today after highlighting, I believe, his versatility. He got back-to-back -back wins on the grass, scores on the dirt. The only thing I was thinking he might be a little cheap in here. I don't know. I don't know how to gauge that. I do know that uh, I intentionally plicked some of the same horses as Ronnie today because we've been discussed uh, by a variety of employees, fans, and horsemen here at Gulfstream Park West in saying that we look a little tense on the air the last couple of days that, unfortunately, I think that I'm wearing out my welcome on this program with you, sir. I don't apologize for that, but uh, we do have the same handicapping mean, opinion here today. You mean you changed your pick so I wouldn't be mad at you? you would. Yeah, I, I kind of did that. I mean, uh, it's not that uh, too big a reach here because these horses all do look like they have a big chance. Dusty Moore fires every time. Stall walking dude fires every time. How about Duke Duke? We didn't even talk about him. He's a 16-time winner. He's a winner of two of his last three races. This is not an easy race, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, Duke Duke, I, I didn't know what to do when I was doing the long I, I was going back and forth and back and forth. You make a great point with him. You know, I made him 9-2, to two and I was really struggling to come up with the horses that I did come up with, and uh, I would not leave Duke Duke off your ticket. If you can spread a little in the perfect 10, I think you put him on there. You make a good point for a, for a real nice guy that you are. The sixth race today, seven furlongs. Here we go made, again. <laughs> made in claim is three-year-olds and up $25,000. I picked the number two in here, Majestic Hollywood, second at this level at Gulfstream Park. It was back in December. Drops again after a troubled trip. It was against Maiden Special Weight Competition back on August 14th. Trainer Ralphie Nix ready on for this performance. Five furlong bullet, 59 and four. Hooking up with Edgar Prado, this team has been doing very, very well. Serious question. I don't have it in the racing form. What is this horse on the morning line? Uh, the morning line in race number seven. Uh, let's see. Number two, race number, excuse me, race number six. Number two is five to two. Okay. And I'm blind. Based on, I know, just, just wondered. I don't have access to the morning line on the racing form. I, I didn't know how much money he would take. I actually didn't think he would take that much. Um, I probably wouldn't have put him in my top three if I had known that. The seven quality guy is intriguing. You use the seven as well. David Fox has two in here. He has Roma's time on the outside and quality guy just to his inside. Quality guy gets to jockey Stephanie LaRitchie here this afternoon. I'm intrigued by that. I think that uh, this horse has probably got an issue or two. He's uh, run pretty well he, uh, in his debut run, and then they put him in for 25, and he ran very, very well but lost, and then they put him in back for 25. He went odds off on, odds on and didn't run that well. He hasn't been seen since July, and now we get Stephanie LaRitchie. She works for David Fox in the morning. David gives her opportunities in the afternoon on a select few horses. She does very, very well with the opportunities that she's given, and I think that this horse quality guy will give her everything he has. I think that she's probably been getting on this horse in the morning right. and knows what makes him tick. Yeah, she does okay, too. Like you said, she won a first race ever, and it was a lot. It was very exciting. That was across town at Custom Park. I also used the four Oliver Rush. Should have the screws tightened today after returning from a seven-month layoff for trainer Bill White uh, to run third at six furlongs. I think the stretch out to seven furlongs will help this horse. Bill White, uh, you talk about snake bit. He's got to get over the top. His horses have all run well, just hasn't gotten over the hump. I think Oliver Rush merits a big chance in here. I used a little bit of a price horse underneath the three, Uncle Woodrow. Uncle Woodrow, uh, I'm glad to see that he got some time off because his race two back was really, really good, and I thought he was sitting on a better performance than he was last time. Didn't run a jump last time. I have to wonder if maybe there wasn't a little bit of an issue. Manny Criolo gave him a couple of months off to recharge his batteries. 49-second breeze just a couple of weeks ago here at Gulfstream Park West. Not sure he's ready to go seven-eighths, but I think that he merits consideration on the bottom half of your exotic because he'll be a good price. Yeah, he's 20 to 1 on the morning line, so certainly if you're looking for a long shot, that might be the way to go.
We're going to turn the page and go to the seventh race. One mile on the turf. Claimers, Phillies and Mayors, three and up. Non-winners of three in life, $10,000. We have a video we want to show you on, well, look at that exact. That never happened. So he is lying by his picks today. Uh, race eight, uh, Lucky Empress rallying to finish fourth, beating one and a quarter lengths. And I know you wanted to show this uh, replay today. Yeah, I wanted you to see how much ground she makes up, Lucky Empress. And Apello's Wonder, who was second that afternoon, is widest on the course in the red cap. This horse is going to come back and win. Looking down inside, that's Lucky Empress in the pink colors and the white blinkers trying to squeeze the needle on, on the inside and does get through there. Not exactly an optimum trip to try to come up the inside lane there, uh, but she did get through and she ran pretty well for Ramsey Zimmerman. Look at that. She's finishing very, very well. She's going to be third in about another stride or two. She probably would have been second in about three or four strides. She finished full of run that afternoon, and I don't know about you, Ronnie, but she faces nothing here that has me any worry at all. I think that this is exactly the way we picked it. It has nothing to do with respecting our, <laughs> our respective handicapping procedures. This is just simply handicapping 101. The six is the best horse. The seven is the second best horse. And then you threw a dart to finish third. <laughs> six, seven, cold punch. We have plenty of paper in the self-service machines today. Make sure you take full use of it and continue the repeat button. When I ask you here, number six, a lucky empress today, ridden by Edgar Prado. So I looked up and I seen how many times did Jane Sibeli, the trainer, use Edgar Prado only once before. So I find that a little bit intriguing that uh, Edgar Prado, riding a great form, jumps aboard on this horse. Yeah, she, she's been using, uh, I, I was trying to get the, the jockey uh, hierarchy for the Sibeli barn, but it's been tough. She's used Goncalves, she's used Ramsey Zimmerman, Rios has got to ride a few, now uh, Edgar Prado is on board, so I don't know that there's any positive or negative to the rider switch. I think that uh, they're just trying to uh, find what what jockey fits what horse? Well, you know, the seven nobody silver, like you said, you know, bounce rebound today. The one Ben to silver absolutely didn't like the slop last time out. Zero for six on that surface. Uh, third place on the finish on the grass back on uh, October 13th. Gave you a spot like the dart, boom, landed. So if you're using your trifecta, superfecta plays, you got to use these three and then try and find a bomber somewhere in there. That you yeah, I think the move here for me, it will be a little trifecta action. Six, seven, six, seven, all, and then six, seven, all, six, seven. Because I think the six and seven have to win and both of them have to make the board. So that would be the strategy for me. Well, let's go to the eighth race this afternoon. A seven furlong starter, optional claimer, three-year-olds and up, $10,000. Scratch the eight, a whiskey tap. We've got a video we want to show you, and it's the stretch run of funded, rallying late to finish second, beaten just a little, uh, almost a one to three-quarter lengths in that race. Look how far back he is. You're highlighting him there. He's six wide on the course there. Telltale friend was a favorite for George Navarro. Full disclosure, well, I needed this horse to get up. I didn't think he had any prayer in the world until right about here. He's really motoring under jockey Luca Panici. Funded is well-documented as very, very good on an off surface, but this is a heck of a performance for a horse that was off about two and a half months. He finishes up full of run there, gets beat by almost two there uh, by the favorite telltale friend who was an allowance invader for White Rabbit Racing. Uh, I don't think it's going to rain. I think it's a beautiful afternoon. <laughs> I wish it would. Funded moves way up. But the way he ran the last time over this fast main track, that was a very, very good race. If he runs back to that race, he has as good a chance as any. Interestingly enough, with Funded, he doesn't usually take all that much money. Even when he's in good spots and running well, he's not, uh, you know, hammered by the betting public. They seem to try to uh, forget about him. I think you forget about him at your own risk today. Yeah, that was a pretty nice performance. I used the six, Karate Jack, going for four in a row, third straight on the surface, Marcus Vitale, Orlando Boca Chica. But I want to talk about the number seven modems, no T, stretching out today, the seven furlongs. I found an interesting pattern here. He wins a race. Then he can't handle Blings Express in the next start. Then he comes back. He wins again. Then he loses to Blings Express again. Then he wins again. No Blings Express here today. I think this horse is going to run exceptionally well with his nemesis on the sidelines. Absolutely no argument for me. My question to you with Karate Jack is, what are you going to do with Double Judge? Double Judge? I didn't know what to do with Double Judge. And he's such a hard-knocking campaigner. I meant from a tactical standpoint, oh. Karate Jack's got a very quick first gear, and Double Judge only knows one way to run, which is a very quick first gear. Double Judge got dueled into submission last time out. Karate Jack's going to have to go with him. I don't think he can sit. I don't think Double Judge can sit. That's a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. I tried to beat Karate Jack. Well, that, that's a good point, and it's a viable point, but I'm thinking uh, Orlando Boca Chica might sit a second flight trip in there and see how that uh, race plays out.
We're going to go. Anything else in this race here, wise guy? This is a, a wise guy. I didn't even do anything. Uh, this is a very, very competitive race. Rocky Gap has a shot to hit the ticket. Uh, a couple of horses are stepping up here. All keyed up, crazy clown time, and Ravello's boy. Not a huge fan of theirs. Whiskey Tap is scratched. Political Justice is going to be caught up in a speed duel. Mm -hmm. So I think that the pace will make the race in this race, especially. Moments no tis. Fund it. They'll both be coming from well back. I like them both. Uh, this is one of the races where if you're getting a perfect 10, I think you got to go a little deep, you know, yeah, in here. I think so. Definitely because of that. Uh, it's pretty wide open. Yeah, we know we talk about three, but sometimes you got to go uh, deeper than uh, we uh, have our selection say. Up well, there. sometimes, I mean, I usually I'll tell you if I'm spreading. I told you yesterday a couple of races I had strong opinions about and a couple of races I spread. And uh, hopefully somebody listened because I had a great day yesterday. Hopefully somebody else capitalized on it as well. Well, let's go to our ninth race, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. Made in Philly, two-year-olds. These are special weight conditions. Uh, scratch the main track only. Number nine, prom dress. Want to show you a video? And it was race five from October 18th. And it's just uh, Susie's pride of Paris angling out, rallying to finish a very nice second in that race, beating uh, three lengths. And I just think the upside on Susie's pride of Paris is going to be good for today. I can't He's, really argue. Yeah, yeah. Where is Susie's pride of Paris? The seven horse there, yeah. tipping to the outside for Goncalves yeah, yeah. and the shadow roll, or in the uh, mic maker blinkers yeah. there, getting outrun late by uh, Al Kali Alia, who was yeah. a first timer for Pletcher, who looped and swooped. Yeah. Susie's prize of Paris improved nicely in her second start. Yeah, so I just thought she was the logical choice near Mike Maker, Edgar Prado, Prado, and then I also used the number six. I do did too, and that is Native Strike. Yeah, Native Strike is a very, very nice horse here on breeding and connections alone. Actually, very much like Christophe Clement first time out. I don't know what about it it is. He's only 17%. It's about a break-even ROI of 201 there. But I like the guy. He fires with first-time starters. And sometimes they draw in against horses like Susie's Pride of Paris and some others where they're not hammered at the windows. If they're 5-2, to 3-1, to 7-2, to two, somewhere like that, I'll sign up for that. I think uh, this horse is well-spotted in her debut run. But I did not use her on top. I, I, I used a horse on top. That what is no. let's say five to one on the morning line. Yeah, I'm a headmistress. I want to hear about this one. That's why I was pointing to it. Here's to... the key with headmistress, and this is information that will not be available to anybody who's using the racing form because this only happened yesterday. She comes out of a race last time out where she beat four home and got beat 16 lengths in the mud at Belmont. The winner of that race, Jack Aranda, ran yesterday at Aqueduct in a grade two and disposed of a one to nine shot of Pletcher's wow. and one off like a good thing. Wow. So she's coming out of a very, very good race. It was her first start off a little bit of a freshening. She takes to two turns for the first time for Tom Albertrani and she gets Leandro Gonsalves here this afternoon. Uh, all those things in moving her in a direction of positive here. She's moving in the right direction. She continues to progress and she won't be a whole... Uh, she won't take a lot of money. She's 5-1 to one on the morning line. That's about right. And yeah. I think that that's a reasonable alternative to some of the logical plays here. Yeah, that native strike, just so you know, is a $320,000 daughter of smart strike. So beautifully bred. I also used the four, and so did you, and that's Gabby's kitten. Figures, uh, okay, after splitting horses last time out, impressive third here at the distance. I thought that was a nice race last time out. Louis Ramirez and Carlos Marquez Jr. Carlos had a win yesterday. Yeah, the late daily double here this afternoon is going to pay something. Just know that going in. This is a very tough sequence. You almost have to whittle down a few in this race because I don't know about Ronnie, but the 10th race for me, absolutely impossible. So many different ways to go. Yeah, well, let's go to that 10th race. The six furlongs claim is two-year-olds and up, $35,000, a scratch 11 Tama. I went with the eight Wayne's Way, and so we have the same exact selections. I don't know what the big problem is. This one found The big problem is this race is absolutely impossible. We can make a case for everybody in here, and you and I have to settle <laughs> on the same three. Well, Wayne's Way uh, found the proper level last time out after following a couple of out of money finishes in the Florida side of stakes with a well meant third at this level of distance. Kathleen O'Connell, uh, Eduardo Nunez, Wayne's Way. Uh, party on, Wayne. What do you I don't really have much to add there. This is a really tough race. Wayne's Way seems to be pretty reliable. He can stalk the pace, he can kick on with it a little bit. Uh, I don't have no idea how the pace is going to unfold here. Uh, I don't know if anybody really does. I mean, you have horses like It's Not Me. He broke his maiden in a big way last time out after missing the start the time before, made the lead in 22-2. and two. Brown Magic, I don't think he wants to be on the lead, even though his two best races are on the lead. Uh, he can make the lead if he wants to under Ramsey Zimmerman. I don't foresee that happening. But then again, I don't know what's going to happen. Tricky Call was sent to the first two times he ran. I just have no confidence in how this race is going to flow out, and I don't think that there's a huge amount of separation between the top horses and the bottom horses here. If this is not a race to use all in some type of wager, I don't know what is. This race is really, really tough, 
and I will endorse all three of the horses I gave out, same three as you, but I will also say that there's about four or five others that have a big chance. Yeah, the five that we both have on the ticket. You have second Brown Magic moved to the day. Vivian Bond Vita Claim made look a pretty nice move in that race and finished fourth behind uh, well, who I see is the common thread in this race, and that's Wayne's Way. Everybody has seemed to be around Wayne's Way in that last race. So if you like Wayne's Way, the couple of these horses that we have on our ticket seem to be have to need to be on your uh, high five ticket. Well, I don't. We didn't want to show a backtrack of uh, number five Brown Magic's last race because it wouldn't flatter him at all. The wheels right. fell off pretty bad there. He he took the lead. He dropped over to the inside. I don't know that the inside was the necessarily the best place on that particular afternoon, but he didn't finish up at all, and he got claimed uh, by David Vivian. Hopefully there's not an issue there. Hopefully he just got tired and was on a surface down inside where he just he couldn't continue on, but man, did he look bad the last 16th of a mile last time. I'm hoping he rebounds here today. Um, again, I don't know if, what kind of price he is on the morning line. He's probably one of the morning line favorites, as he should be, uh, and this is a race where I can't I have no opinion. I mean, I don't even know how else to say it. I, I, this is such a tough race. He's six to one. Six to one on the morning line. If you get six to one, he's worth a gamble. And number seven, Keith for speed, is going to wear blinkers after that three wide bid fall, fell short uh, behind Wayne's way again. Bill White, Edgar Zayas. Uh, maybe the blinkers will uh, have this one uh, cl closer contact with the early uh, pace scenario in here. That's why I threw him on the ticket. Yeah, rider switch here from Josie Gomez to Edgar Zayas with an equipment change. They're trying to wake this horse up. He run like a good thing two starts ago and took some time off after that. I think the key to this race is what happens with the 12 walk away slow. This horse is coming in for Eddie Pleese and Paco Lopez. First time from New Jersey. I'll pass if he takes money. That makes this race even more bettable. This is absolutely the best betting race on the afternoon. It's the super high five race of the day. And boy, you deserve to get paid if you hit this super high five. This is a really tough race. And the perfect 10 starts in the race number one today as we mentioned at the top of the show 10 cent wager 10 percent takeout and you got to get in early because after the first you're out yeah one of the things to you we should mention about race number 10 again just trying to go through contenders six horse jojo cool uh, his first run he finished third cool union man came back to win and then he came back to win they both got beat by g5 G5, not in your racing form as a next out winner, but he did win. He won Friday afternoon here in the Friday feature, did it like a good thing also for Todd Pletcher. So he comes out of a live race. Race 10, so such a good betting race. If you're with us and you bet one race all afternoon, that's the race to play, a full field with value everywhere. Well, that's how we see the Monday card with Dark for Live Racing on Tuesday. Back Wednesday with a bunch of carryovers. It's going to be a, a great week. And on uh, next weekend, we've got the Sunshine Millions preview day. Yeah, all kinds of momentum moving into this next week of live racing. Racing returns on Wednesday. Carryovers in the pick six and the pick five. Huge carryover in the pick five of $16,000. You're looking at a $50,000 pool, in my opinion, for a pick five on Wednesday. $50,000 guaranteed in the Rainbow Six. We're getting to the point where that becomes uh, inconsequential because they're going to bet that much into it anyway right. with over $30,000 carried over. And then as you touched on, stakes galore next Saturday, Sunshine Millions preview day. Big card of racing. Our friends from HRTV will be on hand with us. It'll be an excellent week of racing here in South Florida. It all starts on Wednesday after we get done with today's 10 race card that gets underway at 1235.